Hi everybody and welcome to this lesson I'm looking at how we can build AWS architectures and this one is focused on how we can build an architecture that's going to be used to host a web application. So building a highly available and scalable web hosting can be a very complex and expensive operation. Sometimes you have dense peak periods and wild swings in traffic patterns which can result in low utilization of expensive hardware. Now, AWS provides the reliable, scalable, secure, and high-performance infrastructure required for web applications while also enabling an elastic scale-out and scale-down infrastructure to match IT costs in real time as customer traffic fluctuates throughout the day, throughout the week, or throughout the month. Now here is a basic diagram of how we can develop an architecture of a AWS infrastructure which can host a reliable and scalable web application for us. So let me walk you through this step by step. Now first and foremost we're going to obviously need a DNS service which is what AWS does for us through Route 53. So the user's DNS requests, again, will be served by Route 53, which is a highly available domain name system specifically developed by AWS. Network traffic is going to be routed to the infrastructure running in Amazon Web Services. Next, we have something called CloudFront. Now, all of the static streaming and dynamic content will be delivered by the Amazon CloudFront infrastructure, which is a global network of edge locations. So requests are going to be automatically routed to the nearest edge location. So content is delivered with the best possible performance. So regardless of where you are in the globe, you will get the content cached locally in the edge location of which AWS has, has around 160 locations throughout the globe. So next, the resources and static content used by the web application are going to be stored in a S3 bucket which if you guys remember is a highly durable storage infrastructure designed for mission critical and primary data storage. Now this will be our best option as compared to EBS or EFS which will not really work for a web application which will be used through CloudFront because with CloudFront we can designate an S3 bucket as its primary source. So in the fourth step, the HTTP requests are first handled by the Elastic Load Balancing, which automatically distributes the incoming application traffic among the host of EC2 instances that are going to be running in your infrastructure. Now, as you guys can see, the EC2 instances are developed and hosted in a multiple availability zone infrastructure. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to enable a greater fault tolerance. So if one of the ACs fails or is down, the other one can pick up the traffic while the first one is brought up to speed by AWS. So it's basically going to provide a seamless load balancing capacity needed in response to incoming application traffic. So next in the fifth step, we have web servers again in both of the availability zones hosted on EC2 instances. Now with EC2 instances, what's recommended is the organization developed AMIs or Amazon machine images. So for example, since they are in an auto scaling group, if one of the web servers or EC2 instances should fail, the auto scaling group is going to automatically provision a new one. So it's highly recommended that we have AMIs for the web servers with the required applications, patches, and software already preloaded in the AMI. So when the auto scaling group provisions a new EC2 instance, it can just grab that AMI, pop it in the EC2 instance, and it'll be good to go. And then in the last step, we have the, the core of the application service, which is the database service. To provide the high availability, the RDS or the relational database service is going to be used in a multi-AZ deployment where you have a primary master RDS and then you have a standby RDS in a different availability zone. So as you guys can see this architecture provides an overall infrastructure for you to operate a web application in a highly available and reliable environment. You have the CloudFront which provides the quick access for the people that are accessing it globally. You have the auto scaling group which distributes the load to multiple EC2 instances so if you have peak traffic it'll be balanced accordingly. And then you have the elastic load balancing also for the application service. We need the ELB for both the web servers, 
for the traffic and the application server so the application can actually handle the load also and then most importantly this is all deployed in a multi AZ environment so you have the fault tolerance if one AZ should fail for some reason the other one can pick up the load while the first one is brought up to speed by AWS so this is the basic setup if you want to host a web application on AWS and just as a reminder the services and the architecture that's required is the Amazon Route 53 the Amazon CloudFront the S3 buckets, the load balancing, the EC2 instances, the auto scaling groups, and then the RDS for the database for the application server.